Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. We are live. This is the Michigan Series, episode number 14. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. If you are not listening live, we are live every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, except for next week, the 23rd, which we will be live at 6 p.m. Eastern with our special guest, Sierra Nevada. That's right. One of the top 10 uh, breweries by production in the country. Going to be joining us to talk about all of their new beer and the likes. I am excited to have them on. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's go around and see what everybody is drinking. I'll start with myself. Uh, remember last week when I had the the mushroom beer? Uh, yeah, the, the mushroom beer that I thought, because it tasted infected, but it was not infected. Um, I was obviously getting the mushrooms. This time, we're going to try it again, but with a different beer from the same company. Uh, this is Flying Embers Act. Active Ales Lions Made Lager. This is USDA organic, in case you cared about that. Um, and it's only got uh, two grams of carbs in this 12-ounce 12, 12 can, so I am excited to try it and continue. And, of course, I'm going to drink also something that's not keto, which is from Earthen Ales, the Commons Common, uh, which I believe is a California common ale. Uh, so I'm excited to drink that. Uh, going around, Dan, what are you drinking, and how are you? Doing good. I bet you know what I have. It's that good old Stoli and soda going on. I don't think I've ever seen you drink that before. Is no, that ever? Is that... I tried it for the first time ever today. It's actually not too bad. Oh, what's the uh, what's the heat over there? It's actually pretty cool. It's I believe ninety eight ninety nine right now. It's been raining every day for like the last week. Thank God. Yeah, we we definitely are getting some flooding out here in Michigan again. Um, I believe they call it a, a once in a 500 year storm happening for a second time in a month. Um, so excited for that. That's for sure. Wendy, uh, how are you? What are you drinking over there? I am fantastic. Super excited for Friday. Uh, I have the Big Lake Imperial Coconut Stout. Uh, it spoke to me while I was looking at the through the doors there. Um, but I'm going to follow it up with the mango peach dank juice, uh, just because I can. All right. We'll definitely be bringing up outside later in the show. Rob, what are you drinking over there? Uh, to, I guess, kind of follow up with the whole coconut, uh, I have got myself a Bottle Logic Mass Action, uh, which is their uh, Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels and finished with bananas, marshmallows, fresh and toasted coconut. Uh, and then I'm going to follow that up with a Southern Grist uh, Colossal Blackberry, uh, which is their, uh, I guess, basically a blackberry sour. I want to talk about this real quick before we kind of get into it, because um, I just took a sip of that <laughs> Flying Embers, and it's got like this weird sweetness at the beginning, and I am digging this a lot. Um, for 85 calories, 4.2 uh, ABV, um, I'm I'm definitely excited for this beer, and I just needed to say that. So I felt bad last week for raining on the parade of flying embers and their mushroom beer stout, whatever. But um, I am much happier with my my choice here. We were supposed to have a guest today. Uh, don't know what happened. Don't know if there is some uh, crossover within communications. But obviously, as you could tell, they are not here. Um, and as always, the show must go on. Uh, so we'll start off fairly simply by going into the news. Uh, Rob, you don't have to chug for this, but here is Robert with the beer. No, news. no, no. We said you had to do two this week. Hold on. <laughs> I think I remember that. I can't. I can't do it. Can't. We'll we'll make sure he uh, he chugs something we'll, later. We, we get yeah. We, we I I did bring something to chug, so it, it, it's pretty much. Um, let's just pretty much say it's either going to contain peach or lemon. We'll, we'll figure out which one we're going to do. Ah, right. Well, I guess let's, we can start off with some local stuff that is going on. That's literally what I was going to say. Let's do some local stuff. Let's do some local stuff. Uh, so as it has uh, come out, um, I think it was last week, um, it may have been a couple of days ago, I can't remember. Uh, I got to bring up the article to see if that was the case. But it, at any rate, um, in regards to, now I said it, the Michigan Beer Festivals, 
Uh, there were a couple summer beer festivals that were planned, and uh, those were supposed to be in Comstock Park in Traverse City in August. Uh, and then two days ago, uh, they, the Michigan Brewers Guild has decided that they are going to cancel those two festivals. Uh, mainly the reason they are canceling them is because they just do not have the ticket sales that, uh, that you know, warrant having the festival. Uh, from what they were saying in their Facebook post, uh, they had uh, one portion where what they said that, um, oh, where'd it go? With the general opening up this year and summer being such a busy time, ticket sales have been unexpectedly slow for the first for the two supplemental festivals in August. The past 18 months have been very challenging for us, just as they have for our members, our member breweries, and so many other businesses in our nonprofit trade association could experience severe hardship if we were to sustain a financial loss, which uh, they did go and reiterate uh, that in some questioning that they were receiving on the Facebook post and basically just said, look, um, we need to have enough sales and tickets to even break even before even having this festival. And it's not even close. So it's right. It put pretty much put them at a point in no return where they had to cancel those two. Now, I guess the bad news, good news is that now the, uh, Detroit Fall Beer Fest will be making its return uh, this year. That is going to be uh, happening on October 23rd. Uh, and unfortunately, much like what they did with the scheduling two years ago, that it is going to be a one-day festival. I uh, wish it was wish it was two, but unfortunately, it's one. Uh, tickets are going to go on sale for that uh, on August 5th. So uh, anybody who bought tickets for the two uh, festivals that are happening in August. They reportedly have said that, that all of the refunds have already been processed and sent to uh, everyone's uh, card owners and will probably take about five to seven days for it to completely process so that they see their money. Uh, but everybody's been refunded for that. And the tickets for Detroit Beer Fest will go on sale on August the 5th. Um, the one thing that um, I actually also wanted to, to, to note that there were three festivals. There is also the UP festival. Um, according to what they were saying on Facebook, that those tickets were selling like hotcakes. Um, I hate that phrase. <laughs> it's a quote. It's a quotable. It's what they said. But those tickets are selling. Uh, that festival is still on. So anybody who's planning on going to the UP Beer Festival, nothing to worry there. According to them, that one is on and they've got enough to sustain and they're going to run that one. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see the the uh, Detroit Beer Festival come back. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to miss that festival, uh, but it is, it is really good that it is going to be back in town. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, I guess just the thought and, and just living vicariously through y'all that uh, that y'all will be, I would hope, uh, the, the Michigan team here at Better on Draft will be going to the festival. Rob, you can always get on a plane on 9-11 and fly up to the UP one. That way you don't miss out. Yeah, that that's that's one that's the UP. Canceled. And... <laughs> 100% canceled, Dan. Oh, the UP one is too? Even no, no, oh, you no. are canceled. Oh, I'm canceled because I said 9 11. <laughs> the, the, the words in your or the order that you used, I wasn't going to go there. I'm putting a stamp on that. <laughs> but no, no, it would, it would kind of, I mean, I've I heard what you guys have said about the UP Beer Festival and, and how cool it is up there and, and all that. It's just. And it, it never works out logistically for, for me to go up there. Well, so it's it, it definitely is a long drive. It is probably one of my favorite festivals that I've been to simply because the weather was gorgeous. It's right on the water and mm -hmm. everyone seems a little bit friendlier there. You don't have people that are whale chasing and I don't recall too many long lines. It's a very uh, casual brewers guild fest honest to god it feels like like a brewers guild festival from like the early 2010s um 
if any of you had the opportunity to go there, plenty to drink, not too many people. Um, I, I tell you what, though, the Detroit Beer Festival, I don't know if I will go to that one um, unless they spread it out a little more and things are a little, you know, spread out. Let's just put that there. If it's not spread out, if they're selling the same amount of tickets, um, I might pass. Uh, or I might just go to do some volunteer work, pour for someone, um, and head out. It's, uh, it's just way too crowded. And, um, you know, I'm going to be honest as much as I'm vaccinated, this shit ain't over. Um, right. And, and, you know, the, the only thing I can think of that would allow them to spread that out is either you cut down the number of breweries or you go into um, you go into one of the other sheds. And for those who have not been to Eastern Market, uh, if you go down there, especially during the shopping days on, on a Saturday, it is a full-fledged farmer's market. And there are, excuse me, there are uh, two indoor sheds, one of which that they, that they do use um, being Shed 5, which is the, the one furthest, uh, I think that's for the, the east end. Um, then there's the other indoor shed, which is Shed 3, uh, which, you know, if, if they were to use both, that's going to be pretty expensive for the guild to, to put up the money for that. And uh, knowing from my own experience of paying for my wedding in Shed 3, it's not cheap <laughs> to get the damn shed especially during a weekend and the fact that I'm guessing that's a Friday. So they have to have all of that stuff set up and all of that stuff cleaned up before midnight so that the Saturday markets can run. Now, if you can get in there, put in some fencing and, uh, open it up to where you can get up to say, even if you include the streets. So if you include like Wilkins and Rio Pell, uh, which is mm-hmm. the, the two streets away from like the main streets, like Russell's a main street, um, yeah. you know, or even, even to Alfred where you could just expand it a little more um, because there isn't really any restaurant. There's nothing in there in those places where you're going to close them off to regular customers. Like you're not going to screw another customer, you know, another business over, I should say. Um, so I will, you know, I, I hope maybe even going past where the bathrooms are and that you could just walk past the bathrooms and there's some more tents over there. So it's a little more spread out. Um, but we've been there on Friday at nine o'clock and that place is wall to wall with people and Saturdays at 1 p.m. That place is even more crazy mm-hmm. wall to wall and God forbid it rains and everyone's huddling inside shed five. Um, right. Yeah. So I, mean, I and, and they could push it back to, yeah, to, to push it back to those streets and, you know, the meat markets are, are not going to be open. Um, obviously you have Eastern market brewing that is right there at the corner at Rio Pell. And, you know, if, if they were to make, um, as you know, hopefully we can kind of chat about a little later about the uh, the summertime socializing district that is in downtown Royal Oak. That if they were to stretch it down to that end of the block, and you know even include Detroit City Distillery, and it just include the whole damn street and set up some some uh, some breweries back there too. And that that's. Now you give a lot of room. You can't do the distillery because of the whole brew pub license. Um, because you have to, they, because they allow brew pubs to distro into the festival, you can't, that, that's why there's no cider and meat at these festivals. Um, Mm. simply because of that reason. Um, I think the, if, if the Brewers Guild works with the city of Detroit, I think they could easily apply and get it. Um, again, you just have to hope that you can uh, grow a little bit bigger or, again, cut down on the tickets. I mean, they su- they succeeded and survived on tickets that were much cheaper back in the day with much fewer people in that same area. You know what? It's the first one back. Just limit the tickets. Wait until Grand Rapids before you make your full, huge return. Um, it, go isn't on, the Dan. Detroit one the smallest one anyways? Uh, they seem to always try to pack a ton of people in there for no reason. I'm I'm pretty sure it is just because it's the most condensed. Um, compared compared to Ypsilanti, 
Well, Ipsy's uh, huge because yes. that's over at Frog Park or whatever it's called. Um, and Comstock okay. Park with the winter, I would say. Yeah, that's that's say even that's bigger. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it is the smallest one of all the festivals. So, yeah. I, I have a quick question, though, because you said something that piqued my interest. Because you said there's no cider and mead at the festivals, but I've poured for bee nectar at Detroit Beer Festival. Yes. And, the, uh, we would have to go back to the... Oh, what uh, episode was that? Because we had them on when they just absolutely dropped the bomb on us that episode. Well, that. We, we were told prior to that episode, and we had uh, Carrie on and Miranda on from Bee Nectar. And this was, I, I can't even find the episode. It was definitely years ago, so I do apologize. So, yes, we actually poured for... Cellarman's a handful Cellar, of times yes. this summer. Yes. So uh, that was if, just an absolute heartbreaker because people just kept coming up. They were looking at the board, looking for the mead, and then not seeing it, disappointed, and just walking away. Yep. Yeah, so this would be April, because I believe it was that day. So April 14th, 2018, it was announced by the Brewers Guild um, that having any type of cider or mead at the festivals would no longer happen because it would hurt their, it's it's technically against the rules of their current licenses uh, for distribution due to brew pubs being able to distribute to the festivals. Uh, because obviously brew pubs cannot distribute. That's just a, a rule for brew pubs in the state of Michigan. Um, so that's why you can't find, say, something like Brown Iron Brew House, uh, one of our old sponsors, at um, some random bar that's not Brown Iron that I can't think at Three Nick Scoreboard. There we go. Another uh, another old sponsor. another old sponsor. <laughs> um, uh, Sean Anderson in the yeah. chat is asking, Rob, are you taking another? Bottle logic bottle down right now is what he's asking. You damn right, Shawnee. I got my shit. I'm drinking my as as now that Nick is in here, I could say my banana cone bitch. So I'm drinking it and you better believe it. <laughs> well, uh, as I'm getting all the names correct on a sheet, welcome Nick to the show. How are you? What are you drinking? Good to be no fucking zoom <laughs> <laughs> God. This is what ha- go ahead. No, oh, no go ahead. No, go ahead. I was yeah. gonna say this is what happens when Ken won't let you in the damn room. <laughs> Shit gets all screwed up. You get all no. Flustered. I, so here's here's what happened. Since so I haven't been on the last <laughs> since I haven't been on the last few weeks because I've been working. This is this is the last four weeks for for Nick for the for work. Sixty hours, sixty hours, ninety hours, and forty hours. Last hold week. On, hold, hold on, hold on. Let me find my violin real quick. I'm not sure <laughs> oh, where I put it. Oh, you know what? I don't want to hear with you in your 110 degrees and drought weather, okay? <laughs> <laughs> here, here it's been like a monsoon after a monsoon after another monsoon here in southeastern Michigan. Anyway, I think the, one, the last time I used my PC, I just put it in sleep mode, and apparently it just doesn't like when it goes into sleep mode because it just bogs down. So. Oh. <laughs> to, to answer Ken's question, I'm drinking Inclusion from Groundbreaker, and I am drinking Two Roots I, New West IPA. Catch, so. it, catch it up on all those uh, beers for all the interviews <laughs> you missed. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you, Mother Nature, for making me work overnight on the last few Fridays, so thank you. And then there was a vacation in there somewhere. Crazy so. this. Yeah, it, it's, it's been it's been crazy, and now there was reports of more floods in southeastern Michigan. Yep, I do, heard but... I heard ninety four is flooded to the point where my friend who works over at the uh, the tunnel um, dr- had to drive illegally on ninety four to get off the freeway just so he could take like side routes home. So um, I definitely <laughs> fear for those who are on the road. Make sure you guys drive safe, uh, especially if you're listening I... to the podcast uh, uh, while you drive. Um, I was going to say, I, I, I had an appointment in Gross Point, um, which is one of the hot spots during the floods. And at around 11, probably around noon, I hydroplaned at least a half a dozen times just on the way. It was that's yes. how bad it was. Visibility yeah. was complete ass the entire way and back home from the appointment. So. Oh, boy. It's just 
It's a sh- it's a shit show. It's, 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 a shit show. it's always so, a shit show. To, to kind of put a bow on on our discussion regarding the Brewers Guild festivals, um, one I think it was too short notice for a lot of people to get out. As much as you're making vacation spots, Grand Rapids, you know, close ish mm-hmm. to the water, uh, as well as um, Traverse City. Uh, which is a nice vacation spot. One, um, Traverse City was obviously competing against the uh, Burning Foot Beer Festival, um, which is a huge festival that a lot of Michiganders like to go to just because it's something really different than your standard beer festival. Um, You get music, you get beer, you get to have fun. Um, That's a lot different than just, you know, like hiring a few bands to play at like the Brewers Guild. Um, And then the 14th, you know, as, as much as... People may not say so. You're going up against Great Taste of the Midwest, which is probably one of the biggest brew festivals in the Midwest. So that's going to knock out any opportunity of you trying to bring in out of staters uh, who would prefer to go to that festival as opposed to uh, this one, because we still take tokens at this one, um, because the MLCC has not clarified their rulings on tokens yet uh, for the Brewers Guild or any other festival for that matter. Um, So definitely stay tuned for the... um, the festival in December or excuse me, in October at okay. Detroit. Stay tuned for the festival over in uh, the UP over on nine 11. Um, and then two weeks before the Detroit festival, folks, uh, the fifth annual brew and fall fest at Jimmy John's field, which is the festival that we are co-hosting once again. Um, so come on out and uh, join us. We will be there the whole time. Um, and if you're a brewery that wants to come bring their beer, especially a new brewery like a Loaded Dice, uh, reach out to us and we'll be glad to, uh, to get you on there, get you on the list. Uh, we, we have connections, that's for sure. Um, get you on the list? People. Get you on the list, yeah. <laughs> to, to sell you us have beer. made the list. <laughs> uh, with that in mind, Rob, let's, let's talk about some more news. All right. I'm kind of mad just as Nick said that I don't have a clipboard, but... <laughs> Uh, with um, one thing I, I came across on on uh, Brewbound today that uh, production workers for uh, Ohio's Great Lakes Brewing Company uh, went public uh, this past Sunday with an effort to form a union. Uh, so brewery workers announced uh, basically their intentions for this newly created um, entity called uh, the Great Lakes Organizing Committee or GLOC. I was I was lovingly <laughs> referring to it as the Glock. So, you know, they're, they're, they're ready to, um, you know, shoot, shoot y'all in the ass on a downstroke. So shout out the far side. The union uh, would include employees in all aspects of production, delivery and maintenance. Uh, however, it does not include restaurant workers at uh, Great Lakes Brew Pub. I'm, I don't know that that doesn't sit too very well with me, but. Um, Now, we saw how this kind of played out last year uh, with Surrey Brewing out of out of Minnesota, uh, where their employees tried to unionize and then the brew pub just conveniently closed. Now, you know, whether it's convenience or not, uh, I'm not going to make that call. It's 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 pretty damn close and just, you know, it's it's on the line. Call call the judge for a replay on that one. I I, I can't make that call. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> uh, but you know we've got two breweries that have unionized. Um, I believe it's been in the last three years uh, that we had Anchor Steam out of San Francisco, which is still to me one of the greatest beer tours I think I've ever taken, and uh, Fair State Brewing out of uh, there in Minneapolis. Uh, as well as with with Surrey, so I didn't know that's kind of Surrey rather. That, that's kind of interesting that that two breweries that are in the same city, one unionizes and the other one doesn't. Um, so we're we're looking at two breweries out of well over eight thousand breweries that we have. I'm curious if this is going to become more of a trend going into the rest of this year and next year before we hit 2023. Um, how many breweries are going to be more unionized, which I kind of feel like it's going to go into talking about the mid tier and the upper tier and no one else, but uh, we'll see what, what you guys say. And also I, I, I want to know if you think it's fair that the restaurant workers are not being included in his unionization. Um, I will say that I did not see any information to tell me why they weren't put in there. 
So I don't have context to that. So don't, you know, go crazy on it. Just, I'm just, I'm just curious, just point blank with what I have and what I said, is it fair that they're not in there? Uh, I'm going to start with Dan. So, yeah. Um, I think you're going to see a lot, not just in the brewery side, but um, everywhere in general coming out of this pandemic, just because everyone realized, you know, they're worth a lot more than some of these crappy ass business. And this is coming from someone you guys know, doesn't, doesn't quite think the same way as some other people on the show. I won't name any names, Ken, but, but, you know, people are starting to realize that, you know, they're, they can't be used. The same kind of shit happened in the ni- or the 1900s, the 20th century. So people are starting to realize that they do need unions. And so I think you're going to see a lot of that step up. As far as the restaurant workers, is it could, because they're a different type of worker, possibly? I know there's restaurant-specific unions for those type of workers. So that could be a thing, but I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that just seems like that would... Uh... If they got in a different union, I guess that's that's okay. It just seems weird that everybody being working in the same place. Are, I'm just not sure how that works. That's yeah, the thing. I, that's the thing. I, I'm not either. And and actually, I guess you know, with you know being in you know an engine industry that we do have, you know, we have the ultimate. I mean, like the UAW. Um, whether there's other unions in there, whether there's like the mill workers union or, you know, this or union or that union that are that are in the facility. I don't know. But, you know, considering there's there's different unions that, you know, that cater toward uh, specific crafts and things like that, that, you know, maybe that maybe that is the, the way to go. I just I, I don't know. I think Dan made a great point that I didn't even think of, which is uh, the fact that there could be other, not competitive unions, but a more, um, a, a, a union that wouldn't like them joining a different type of union. Um, you know, I can only imagine that well, as much as there's the UAW and a lot of people who work at, you know, General Motors, the big three all were, you know, part of the UAW. I think that there might be other unions that would try to encroach, like, say, like there was a um, some type of engineer union or a uh, electrician union. Um, and they want obviously the UAW wants people to join the UAW, not some, you know, other uh, electric uh, electrician union. Um, that's different. So that might be the case um, that there might be a restaurant union in Ohio. My other thought is, is that the brew pub uh, itself, like the restaurant part might be a separate entity. Um, kind of like how Rochester Mills and Rochester Mills brew pub are two completely different companies as much as it's the exact same words. Um <laughs> You know, there there aren't for for those of you who don't know, like they they only share two recipes: Rochester Red and Milkshake Stout. That's it. Any brewer you get to the production facility that isn't those two, you can't get at the brew pub itself in Rochester Hills. So for those of you who are upset that the production facility sold out, you can still go to the brew pub and it's perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, I, I want to kind of pass it to, to Wendy, because Wendy, you work in a uh, more industrious business. Um, so I'm curious your opinion. Well, I think that there's been some good points made, but we really don't know enough information in order to be able to say, yes, this is good. No, it's not. Usually, so I work at a company that is not union, but um maybe 15 or 20 years ago, they did try to unionize our shop. And it was one employee brought it to the people, brought it to the employee, other employees, and they voted on it. And the employees voted not to become union. So maybe, maybe the brew pub is a different entity and they decided they didn't want to be a part of it. Maybe it is the fact that it's a, a union that focuses on um, the, um, industrialization portion of the brewing. So there's probably a lot of different reasons that it's only going to be for one section. Um, As far as whether or not we're going to see a lot more unions come up, I've been a member of the Teamsters Union and I've been a member of the AFL-CIO through different jobs. And I honestly think that unions have a time and a place, but they're not always necessary. So I think it's going to be, it's going to depend on people and what they really want to see happen. And 
what businesses do to step up to take care of their employees. Uh, Nick, you're mm-hmm. in a union, aren't you? The UWUA? Uh, <laughs> it's actually funny because, <laughs> um, no, I my job is not unionized. However, similar to Wendy, um, probably before my time as an electrical engineer for a said utility company, um, there was an effort to unionize our job, our job positions, planning engineers. Uh, we were kind of look, we're kind of looked at somewhat like, not really like linemen, but kind of in the same work. We're, we're kind of in the same like reporting structure. It's kind of weird, but um, there was an effort to unionize, and that failed. Um, as someone who has union employees directly reporting them as part of the utility workers union of america uh local 223 shout out um <laughs> I, I i agree with wendy there is, i think there's a <laughs> that nice rob i think there's a, there is definitely a time and place for unions based on the craft based on the profession um I work with, like I said, I have people at Local 223 UWUA, and I also work with those with IBEW Local 17, which is the overhead linemen. And then there's the underground linemen that are also Utility Worker Association of America. But um, when you look at what they do, climbing poles, working with energized equipment, there's a reason why they're in a union to protect themselves and you need that representation because they're out there risking their lives every day. If you would have seen some of the stuff that I've seen over the last 10 years as a, as an engineer, mind you, I'm probably missing out on 95% of the stuff that happens out there when it's not, when I'm not out there, they're rightfully so they're part of a union. There's some crafts that should be in it and there's others that probably don't need to be a part of it. (sighs) I, I, should I, beer I, be part of it? It's, it's, I guess that's, that's a question. It's, it's, should, yeah, should should beer be part of it? It well, oh, oh, is Pepsi part of a union? Are the people that work for Pepsi and Coca Cola are they part of a union? I actually know. Yes. I I actually know this because <laughs> I was applying for a position probably. 15 years ago jesus no so, not 15 um but but, but with that Ken, but, you, you were in middle school 15 years ago let's be real middle school i was I, 15 years ago high. i was okay i was working for the bank i wasn't managing the bank yet but i was working <laughs> for the bank so, um, so so i guess i don't know where do you draw the line people bottling coca-cola and pepsi or bottling canning beer on a small scale there is no line if you want to there is, yeah you're right there is no line so <laughs> i don't think it's about what they're doing it's about what their needs are and whether their needs are being met by their employers well let's let's look at a a great two two of them that i could think of off the top of my head um one is modern mm-hmm. times modern times their employees even mm-hmm. though they weren't in a union went on strike until the ceo stepped down after the the whole rap magnet me too during the craft beer movement here two months ago um there was also another one at trillium um in which they rectified it internally so no unions were created um but i feel like if if you're working some type of you know local uh, first of all i 100 percent believe that if you want to unionize you should unionize um secondly there is positives and negatives to the union in which the industry can dictate that. Uh, but as Dan said, I think we're going to see a lot of collective bargaining and not necessarily for a specific um you know, maybe a specific site, like a small site, but a lot of places. I think somewhere in our chat, Andrew Parr was talking about um, the hotel and restaurant, like having a union for hotel and restaurant employees. So some type of hospitality employees um, Mm -hmm. getting into their own union. So you could be part of a union and not necessarily, um, you know, be have a union for a very specific um, place. Uh, but but again, that goes into unions, and that's about as much information as I know about unions. Um, I have s- never been in one. Uh, probably could have used one of my two jobs ago, we'll say. Um, 
but uh, let's <laughs> let's let's. Cont- I don't know if anybody else has I, anything on that. I, I, all I know is that when it comes, it's a touchy subject. It can be it can be a very touchy subject to talk about unions in front of those that are in a union versus those that are not in the union that work for the same company. It's. Uh, I have a lot of close work, a lot of close work friends who are part of a union, and I like to think that they, you know, reciprocate the other way around. Friends with me as well, and you know, when it comes to union business, you know, they like to keep amongst themselves. It's a very, very touchy subject. I agree with Wendy, but I also agree with Dan. We're gonna see probably see some changes in new unions being created or unions where they don't didn't exist in workplaces before they are probably going to show up. I think it's just going to be a matter of time, which one, which industry will be the first ones. So maybe craft beer will be the first one. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. You know who I think is going to be craft beer. I think it's going to be the weed industry. Ooh. If they need to unionize. Ooh. Yeah. Which is the funniest. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, but, but, but the thing pretty is pretty ironic. You, yeah. But do you think they really will have to? Yeah. Look, for sure. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Oh, for you, sure. I, b- you, you between think so? between just staff, growers, cultivators, farmers. Mm-hmm. Uh, As these farms get bigger and bigger. Oh yeah. 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 I I, mean, I, look, I, look, look, I, I think want to think about the farms. Okay. I, I, I think at about. minimum on the agricultural side, it's going to happen. Um, and I I'm gonna kind of tie it into the next news article. So uh, I'll I'll help you, Rob, with uh, mentioning the next news article. Uh, Go ahead. But. If those of you who pay attention to the news, um, Chuck Schumer uh, announced that they are looking to institute legislation to decriminalize marijuana in the country, not just a state by state option. So this is fully decriminalized weed in the U.S. Um, what that means for the industry, there's a lot we need need to look at the legislation for that matter, let alone what does it entail? Does it allow you to grow can you grow locally? Do you have to have a permit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? We're we're not. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, we ain't four twenty, no. not seven seventeen. Um, <laughs> but the reason why I think it, you know, that's going to unionize, and I think it's going to be big, is um, Oscar Blues, the uh, um, Dale Cajun. So if you ever had Dale's Pale Ale, uh, that's his. Uh, is investing mm-hmm. in the weed market. And we kind of talked about it last week. Uh, for those of you who listened, you can obviously listen to the podcast. If you subscribe to us on iTunes, make sure you leave a like, comment, review. Five stars, please. We have too many one stars after some touchy <laughs> subjects. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Seriously? Oh, sorry I, can already, I can already hear the typing with more of them coming right now. Need a, one need star review because up. Ken asked for five stars. Um <laughs> But you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. What do they say? Hit the ring the bell. That's right. Um, but should the, the question I want to ask you guys is that uh, last week we discussed that craft beer drinkers are not craft beer only. They drink, you know, different types of spirits. They drink wine. Uh, they are not, you know, uh, a PBR and only PBR kind of person. Um Clint Eastwood, Grand Torino, I think is what I mentioned last week. Yeah. Um, Get off my lawn. <laughs> so should the whole country decriminalize marijuana? My question to you guys is, do you think we're going to see it make a hit into the pockets of craft beer makers? Do we think creating <laughs> that new um, that new product that's available for everyone, will that – um, hit the pockets of craft beer makers. And again, when we talked to Dan, Dan shaking his head, no, and I'll let you go in a second. Um, when we were talking to our, our guest last week, who well being, who was talking about um, people who are going sober and choosing marijuana instead of alcohol as their vice. Um, Dan, what's, what's your thought? You don't think it's going to hit the, the bottom no, line of craft beer? totally two different markets no one's smashing a 10 percent beer and then like smoking a joint or anything like that and on top of that there's less than 20 states left that don't have any legalized marijuana so if it hasn't affected it now it's not going to i'm pretty much at the same place i mean i feel like while it's going to take a piece of the market I don't see it taking a significant chunk for a decade. It, 
And even with trying to get the laws to pass to get everything set where, you know, even with some states where, you know, they would, well, obviously when it gets passed federally, um, you know, that, you know, states aren't ready for it, that there, there aren't places that there aren't, aren't municipalities that, that have rules in place on where, um, you know, cannabis can be sold. There, there won't be any rules in the state of where, you know, CBD drinks can be sold or rather, let me rephrase that, that there are CBD drinks, but THC drinks uh, where those can be sold. They can't even be sold here. I mean, we're talking about two roots and having talked to them a couple of weeks ago where they're making cannabis drinks, but they can't sell them here. <laughs> so, you know, they, they basically have to, they, I, I think we talked to them once where they said that they make the beer here and then they had to transport it out of the state because they couldn't infuse it with the THC because it wasn't legal here. I, 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 I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but you know, that's what I thought was going on. But now, obviously I mean, as it, it was, as it was mentioned earlier in the show, apparently Dan and I don't get along about a lot of uh, different topics <laughs> and this is going to be one of them. And, and I, I, I want to, promote a counter offer and saying that as much as they're you're, you're saying they're two different industries which i agree to an extent i think they're both um uh vices and i think they're both um extra money that you have in your pocket that you will spend on the product you will choose if i that's the same way as i would say sure i'm drinking this commons common from earthen ales um but if i went to zatuna liquor over in rochester hills just south of m59 on rochester road and i decided instead of buying beer i'm gonna buy uh suntory whiskey sure whiskey and beer aren't necessarily competitors except for in the drink space but they're competitors for my money in the vice category yeah yeah, I could see that. Yeah, but let me ask you this. It's how long has the weed been legal in Michigan? It's been a couple of years now, hasn't it? Uh let's uh, we'll say 2019 it was decriminalized and then we weren't yeah. getting we weren't getting weed until mid 2020, mid to late 2020. Well, last year was probably when recreational was legalized. Well, I mean, it's, it's pretty it was, much it was, pretty much look at it is this is that we still don't have the shops in Detroit because the council can't even figure shit out. <laughs> But the point is, the point is, you're not seeing. That's a that's a totally different episode, Rob. Yeah. The, point, <laughs> the point is, you're not seeing craft beer take a plunge over it there in Michigan, just like we're not well, seeing it here. Well, we did see a plunge, but again, can you compare 2020's numbers to anything based on? What um, Dan's trying no. to say is, the people who are going to spend their money on marijuana, if it's just because it's legal, we're already spending their money on marijuana anyways. It just yep. Wasn't above the book on the books. Not yeah. not people I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, just because it was made legal doesn't mean the neighbor yeah. down the street decided oh. they were gonna go start smoking it. Let's Hold be on, because I I'm not drinking beer anymore. I'm gonna go get high. I've 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 spent money <laughs> on marijuana or THC products, but I've never done it in a state that it was illegal. I never purchased weed in the state of Michigan. I have in Denver. I have in Seattle. And but but I never did it in Michigan. So am I that much of an anomaly? I think so. N- no. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Yes. Yes. Most people like if All right, they we got wanted, Rob wanted to smoke it, they would. Um, Rob smoking. says no. Wendy says yes. Dan and Nick, I mean, are we going to tie or <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I mean, if you it knew, if you were in a state where you knew you could easily get it, like you had a connection to get it, you would probably do it. Let's I, be honest. I could easily get it in here. Even even <laughs> if I wouldn't even smoke it, if I was in a state where I knew I could easily get it and get it legally, I would I would probably do it. I'd probably would. I mean, I, I've got. Dan. Family and, and other people who would. So I'm like, hey, I'm buying it for them. But hey, I get to buy it legally. That's Dan awesome. and Nick have known me for 18 years oh, now and we time. know we know plenty of people and just our inner circle that we could have easily purchased weed if we wanted oh, yeah. to oh oh yeah but i oh, never since did it's been legal have you purchased it no not not weed specifically <laughs> so, again it's legal now and you still haven't bought it maybe, maybe it's the theory of when so, craft beer enters michigan like i don't buy really it now that i can it. get it <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, logic into not, this 
Not <laughs> Wendy, not weed specifically. Edibles, yes, I will say that. I mean, it's THC, but THC. It, when you say it, weed, it yeah. encompasses all of that. Not, not weed specifically. Look, You're like a kid look, trying to like look, skate around the yeah, trend. skate around. No, I, I didn't <laughs> know. I did, no, I but, did it okay, nail. but yes, anything with THC, yes, I have, and I have no problem admitting that. I do it. It helps me sleep at night. For someone that used to get Nick's, up two, Nick's two times getting a, a call night. Monday from DTE. We need you to yeah, be watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's only suddenly just a random bit, drug man. screen's gonna come up. Uh, you oh, know, uh, I want to tell you guys a quick anecdote before I'm, we I'm go to the next that bucket. the next Ooh. story. But the so this was multiple jobs ago. Um, worked for a company in Madison Heights. It was an office job for uh, a yeah. um, vendor for a bank. And so we, I was gonna say, this is the, the the one that everyone basically that we know worked. At. Yeah, I, I hired a lot all of right, friends right. for that. I job. We're not gonna go into the name. It. I just want to make sure we're on the same. Okay. So. <laughs> We gave employees a four month notice for a single drug test because we were moving them all from temp jobs to permanent jobs. And you had to do the permanent job thing where you pee in the cup the one time. There was no random drug test after that. It was the one time. And we still had people fail. Wow. <laughs> like we were giving you the opportunity. We, you could study for this pee test for four months and you still fail. Like it, it blew my mind. Wendy, that one. go for it. I was selling and I was selling life insurance and I was speaking with a cut with a client and we were filling out our application and the questions have, you know, do you smoke marijuana? Do you do this? So I, one of the questions was very generic about drug use. And she said, no, I don't do that. And we're, we go farther on, we're asking these questions and she lights up a joint right in front of me while we're filling out the application. That's amazing. I was like, you just told me that you don't do drugs. She's like, oh, I thought you meant cocaine. You yeah, thought you meant coke. She you literally know. said that. No, I know with the I coke like, market, with the legal <laughs> coke market, dip into the, to the craft beer scene. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like yeah, that point. I, yeah, I thought you meant heroin. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I thought you meant crystal. Hold on, let me put my pipe away. I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, what's the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking amazing. Uh, True story. We, oh my God. In, in the chat, Andrew Parr, uh, fan of the show, asked a, a question, and I think we're probably all in agreement. And he talked about um, if passed nationally, uh, will there be rule changes for certain jobs uh, like trucking or insurance regulations? And or, um, I think health insurance companies in the, the country will obviously make a lot of changes, just as they are for changes if you smoke. Um, and the same thing with smoking and getting a job. There are there are yeah. um, jobs that don't allow you to smoke even on your free time. Um, they give you nicotine tests like uh, Hollywood Casino over in Toledo. Um, mm -hmm. Like not only are they smoke free because it's Ohio, uh, they're like you cannot you, you can get a nicotine test to get that job or you have to take a nicotine test to get that job. Um and so I think obviously those things will happen for jobs like truck where you can't be under the influence. You can't be under the influence of weed while you're driving. No. Um, just as Though much as I, there I, are laws I, where you can't be sleepy while you're driving. I mean, I, I will say that, you know, in, in being in the trucking industry, that if not for a lot of the projects that we have been doing over the last four years in preparation of just even just you know, autonomous, that without the stuff that we're doing, I probably would be worried, but I'm really not. <laughs> I, I also think there's, there's just going to be like right now, um, I have a, a pilot uh, friend who works for Delta and he says, you know, he can't drink thir before his on-call starts. He has to be sober for 36 hours or 24 hours or something like that. There's a rule that he can't start drinking and he has to be below a certain ABV or ABV. Um, oh my God. BAC. There we go. Um, so I, I just, there, there will be rules changes. Some companies um, will you know, still require you to be drug free, which you still have to follow if you want to work for that company. That company yep. that I worked for, their HQ was in Colorado. It was legal in Colorado, and you still couldn't smoke and work there. Um, 
So, uh, Sean Anderson in the chat, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, wants us to get Holmes on the show, which obviously I want to get. So maybe maybe I'll push a little harder for that. Uh, Michael DeVore is in the chat saying uh, that is hilarious. Guys, you can join us in the chat. Uh, we're on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash better on draft, youtube.com forward slash better on draft. If we have guests, you can ask them questions. Um, right now, we're just kind of shooting the shit, uh, talking about news. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like an old show, like one of those uh, yeah. uh, first Back shows, in the day. Which, which I definitely have. Now, Rob, uh, I believe yeah. you have an opinion question you want to run with. So I'm going to do. I'm going to actually... hold, hold, hold on. Oh, OK. We're going to take a break. Um, the guest will not be showing up. They emailed us in the middle of uh, the show saying that they had a medical emergency. So we'll forgive them this time. Um, hopefully right. we'll get them in here in two weeks because I think we have an open time for 730. Um, with that in mind, then... we're going to take a break. Uh, for those of you on the show, we'll be back at eight o'clock. Um, we're going to play some music. Uh, this is LXL. We'll be right back with the Better Undraft podcast. 